Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Put your hands up. Now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. My goodness. Oh my God. Welcome to the police force. My name is David Schechter. I'm a veteran reporter and now I work for you. I'm taking real people out on the road to get their questions answered. And you're coming along for the ride. This is Verify Road Trip. Under the microscope, that's where American police departments are today. In large part, it's because of the high profile police shootings of unarmed African-American men whose stories are then spread on social media. A sea of critics like Black Lives Matter accuse police of being biased against the black community. Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for allowing us to gather to come together. A.J. Brown's gonna take a closer look at that. He's a youth pastor and a father of two, and he's worried about these kids when they go out. Uh, their concerns and even the concerns of their parents is that someone will mistake their child as a threat when they're just really just an ordinary citizen. I'm taking A.J. to Police Academy to see for himself how officers are trained and to ask this, when it's life or death, can you train police to be fair? AJ and I are at the Arlington, Texas Police Academy. It's a standard issue you've got? Yes. To get in, we have to pass a physical agility test. You got it. You're cutting it close. My goodness. Here's what I'm learning. Anything I can do, AJ can do better. <laughs> Show <Jumbo. laughs> Trust me. <laughs> we came to learn how cops make split-second decisions. So let's go make some of our own. Corporal Heath Cook is our shoot-don't-shoot shoot instructor. You're going to stand here, and essentially you're going to see just a snapshot in time. And based on what the actor does, says, has in his hand, uh, you will make some use of force decision. And you've been called to a neighbor dispute, AJ? Okay. And begin. Do not come any closer, sir. Hey, Stop where you are. Hey, I, AJ only has a second to figure out if these guys are a threat. Mace, Mace, Mace. And they're not. Just keep in mind, mm -hmm. they're just arguing. Yeah. Neighbors have disputes. Turn weapon down, please. Why, why don't you tell him to put his weapon down? Put your weapon down. Oh. It felt like I had no time to react. I liked it better when we were just running on the track. <laughs> oh man, I'm going for the Cowboys. Cowboys, man, enjoy yeah. yourself. Yeah. Hey, hey, put the gun down now. Oh, oh, oh. That was fast. AJ had to shoot a second guy who came out of nowhere. Fellas. I almost pulled my gun on a guy who was just reaching for his phone. <laughs> Have a great day. So it was kind of a fight for me not to just go right to my weapon. So, you know what? When I, I yeah. drew on the guy who pulled the cell phone out. Okay. Because I <laughs> see his hand go up and I'm drawing my gun. Yeah. How do you train an officer to be prepared to, hey, maybe you shouldn't just firstly react with deadly force? If they can buy themselves 30 seconds longer, mm -hmm. a minute longer, an hour longer, then that gives them options. Okay. And those options could be something that's less deadly or less injurious to anybody who's there. That was hard. You just don't know where a threat might come from. Cease fire, cease fire. For an outside opinion, we go see Johnny Nan, a PhD criminologist at Texas Christian University. He's telling us many departments train officers to see everyone as a potential threat. It's almost like um, 101 ways that the world can kill you. Yeah. So every, th every aspect of training is, is geared towards safety first. What is the negative side effect to that then? Yeah, that ne negative side effect is that the cynicism that the officers face so, and mistrusting of the media, of the public, uh, of everybody who's not, not police. So the professor is critical of that bunker mentality. Back at the Arlington Academy, they think they do it differently. Yes, they are teaching cultural sensitivity to help officers get past their biases, but they also teach officers about brain science, specifically the prefrontal cortex. That's the part of the brain responsible for decision-making, socially acceptable behavior, and impulse control. Under life or death stress, the prefrontal cortex with its many benefits shuts down and survival mode kicks in. 
Trainer Charlie Fernandez teaches officers how to keep their calm in stressful situations. We don't want officers making decisions based on bias. We want officers making decisions based on facts, based on law, based on morals and ethics. But the prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that we need to do that. So I got to keep that the best I can engaged. Come on, AJ, get out, get out, AJ, get out, come on. Non-lethal tactics like wrestling style moves buy time for an officer, allowing him or her to maintain control and to keep the prefrontal cortex turned on. An island of safety, get to the island. Right, get to the island. Get to the island so you can at least kind of catch your breath, so to speak, you know, at least calm down, use your mental faculties to start thinking about your next course of action. Everything about the outcome of this incident is a tragedy. That's Arlington's police chief, Will Johnson, and his department has not been immune to controversy. In August of 2015, Christian Taylor, a young, unarmed African-American man, broke into a car dealership in Arlington. A rookie officer shot and killed him. That officer was fired, but a grand jury declined to indict. So when that incident happened, like, what thought went through your mind about training? The first thing that went through my mind with that, with that incident okay. was that we were going to be judged by the conduct of other departments at other places. Do police officers bring a certain bias to work with them? And what do you do about it? All people mm -hmm. have some degree oh, yeah. of either implicit or overt biases. Mm -hmm. Can I eliminate it? Probably not. But can I manage it down through training and manage our risk? Absolutely. Now Corporal Cook is teaching us one of the best ways to reduce the risk of a life or death encounter. It's a technique called de-escalation. Can you have a seat for me, Liz? Slow things down. Buy some time. All right, you ready to go do it? All right, let's all right. go. All right, I need backup. In this scenario, AJ is all alone, and he's got a possible armed robber cornered on a dead-end street. Driver, I need you to stick your hands out of the window now. 45 seconds later, the trainer sends me in as backup. I'm with you. All right. What's going on? Okay, so I think I will hold for the unit since he's refusing to step out of the vehicle. He said, I'm not going back. He said, I'm not going back. Driver, hey! Put your hands up. Now, step forward. Drop to your knees. How did we do? Tell us how we did. How did that go down? You did pretty well. From, from a de-escalation standpoint. Corporal Cook tells us had we not waited for backup and rushed in, the suspect was instructed to shoot us. If we didn't de-escalate, we might be dead. When we talked at the beginning, I, I could see that you were skeptical about oh, yeah. the police as an institution. Mm -hmm. Have your feelings changed at all on that? In high profile shootings, AJ had thought officers seemed quick to pull the trigger. Now? I feel like this experience has definitely opened my eyes to the, um, the sacrifice and even the, um, the continual kind of stress that officers experience day to day. In life or death situations, can you train officers to be fair? I think what the officers are saying and what I've gathered is that you can't train them to be fair in those split second decisions because at that point, they're not thinking anything about fairness, they're thinking about surviving. Does that mean you give them a free pass on training down and, and getting people to work past their biases? Oh no, I think we definitely should hold them accountable with the training of cultural awareness, of how to uh, defuse the situation, how to de-escalate. I think a lot of time and resources should be put towards that um, in order to ensure that when officers go out that they remain safe and that the public is safe. Why? Because once the situation escalates to guns coming out, Fairness may be an option that's no longer on the table. But don't take my word for it. Take his.